have entered the realm of the gods. So give us your mind and your full attention. So you say you deal with esoteric information? I never heard of such. Well, you're in for a treat. Blah talk, blah talk, this is a blah talk. I lean hell bay dropping jewels every day. Blah talk, blah talk, this is a blah talk. Metaphysical, we deal with the spiritual. Blah talk, blah talk, this is a blah talk. I lean hell bay dropping jewels every day. Blah talk, blah talk, this is a blah talk. Metaphysical, we deal with the spiritual. So you claim to be a god? Damn right I'm a god. The maker, the owner, cream of the planet Earth, father of civilization, god of the universe. Wow. Tune in or lose, friend. All strategies apply mathematically. The information he drop is real powerful. So get your notepad, it's more than an hour full. Watch your jaw, the crew with watch the talk. Indigenous to the land, wherever we stand. First world order, we bring it at home in the first quarter. Invisible lines don't apply, we cross borders. Silly rabbit, knowledge for God. No matter where you resign, Mars, Temple of Mars. So don't fret or proceed with hesitation. Just tune in to Blog Talk to get the information. Peace. Whether you suffer from pain in your back, the aches in your knees. Come on down and purchase you some ancestral tea to get rid of all the parasites, toxins, and fleas. Spiritual elevation for cosmic gravitation. So put away the patience, because there's no time to be wasted. Trust law, common law, and contract law. So I'm going to try to bring them on in here and apologize for the little lateness. Um, we're just getting in. Um, we're going to try to get this going as soon as possible here. Um, so let me pull in for the Tahaka. What's going on, Greetings brother? Faith. All right, all right, all right. I'm I coming across. Is, is it okay? That's all right. Is it? Is, how am I coming perfect, across? Perfect. Perfect. Loud and clear. Oh. All right. Good, good. How you wanna cut this pie, man? Hey, um, let's let's get into the trust information and then go into the common law and contract law. Let's see how we can work it all together. Okay. Well, when it comes to trust law and the way we uh deal with it is we take it piece by piece and what I mean by that is we start with identifying what trust we're going to use. There are many, many different types of trust. And it's pretty much based on what you want to do and how you want to structure your future and the future for your children and family members using a trust. And uh, I'm right. a partial to... Mm-hmm, I'm a partial to the... Uh, okay. Irrevocable common law mm-hmm. trust. That's my yeah, favorite. Okay. Right. And why is that, Brother Tonka? Well, uh, in my opinion, based on what I've researched and studied, uh, the irrevocable common law trust is the most powerful trust on the planet. And uh, to fully grasp that uh, an individual has to get full knowledge of each player and their role in that particular trust and uh, because it, it covers the entire gambit. Um, we want to clearly define the role of the grantor, 
clearly define the role of trustees, clearly define the roles of the executive secretary, clearly define the roles of the trust manager, if you got one there. Uh, what role do the beneficiaries play in the trust, and what is the role of the trustee, I mean of trust protector? And so with that structure and clearly defining each individual's roles, and nailing that to contract, now you're able to function with all your backup systems in place, you're stating the rules and regulations and guidelines and laws uh, in your indenture or your declaration of trust, and uh, you're prepared to do whatever modifications that has to be done as the trust moves along. Okay. Um, would you recommend doing a foreign 98? A foreign 98? Well, mm-hmm. a foreign once you're in that, huh? Yeah. Like a, 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 a trust establishing one outside of the United States? Right. Okay. Well, based on what I've learned from that, are uh, you really going to have to? Um, make sure you got all your bases covered on that because uh, there are a lot of things that you could run into. For instance, you could uh, have that trust set out there, some offshore banking or what have you, or some offshore investments and stuff, but you got, you're got you dealing with trustees that's native to the land or what have you, and they may not speak the same language. And, uh, you know, you and then they're not willing to come to the United States when you run into problems uh, with the authorities here in the country, uh, especially Internal Revenue Service. So I'm not saying that you can't do that and you shouldn't do it, but if you're going to consider that, you have to make sure that all the bases are covered and you thoroughly have confidence throughout the entire trust and everything is set up so that everybody is, because it, 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 it all deals with the word trust. And so... Um, in my opinion, the most powerful trust is uh, structure or the glue to that uh, irrevocable common law trust would be a family structure. Okay. What's some of the laws of it that you have found gathering around that, Brother Sahaki? Could you say that again? I was saying, what are some of the laws of it that you have gathered and that you have found concerning um, trust law in concern to a um, irrevocable um, common law or express trust. Okay. Uh, now, when we're talking about an express trust, we're talking about a whole different thing. Um, mm-hmm. They have some similarities, but I, I always uh, uh, go over this chart with, with my uh, with my clients so they'll clearly understand. Uh, the structure of what's going on inside the United States and make sure that operates within the confines of the trust if they, if they can understand the structure. For instance, you take the difference between state citizen and federal citizen. Uh, a state yeah. citizen had unalienable rights which uh, derived from the creator uh, versus a federal citizen has civil rights which derives from Congress. Uh, yeah. The state man is a free man. Congress is a subject. The federal uh, uh, individual is a subject. Uh, the state citizen is a de jure citizen under common law, uh, whereas a federal citizen is a de facto citizen under amatory equitable jurisdiction. A state citizen, again, is protected from the federal government by the federal constitution and the Bill of Rights whereas the federal citizen has limited protection under the 14th Amendment. Uh, state citizen owes allegiance to the contract, the government, or the Constitution, but none to the foreign corporation of the District of Columbia or its municipal laws. Uh, the federal citizen mm-hmm. owes allegiance to income, which is income tax, to the federal government because of the benefits derived, such as civil rights, Social Security, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, the state citizen is a free citizen, whereas a federal citizen is a franchise of the federal corporation. So 
if we understand both sides of that fence and you are uh, able to make sure that uh, your beneficiaries clearly understand that, the trustees understand that, uh, everybody within the uh, confines of your construct understand that, then you're able to function pretty good uh, with a trust. Okay. Those are just a, a few of the uh, foundational rules that uh, we deal with when it comes to uh, dealing with trust. Trust is a very, very powerful thing. Um, it, if it's run pro- properly, everybody uh, everybody is a benefit. Uh, the, the the best uh, most most people would think that the beneficiaries come out best because they're able to inherit uh, through the trust. However, the most beneficial product that the beneficiaries will receive from trust is knowledge. Mm, okay. And the uh, right, so, irrevocable common law trust uh, is good for over 25 years. So you got plenty of time to get that education and know how to keep that trust going. Okay. And, of course, so with the last thing. With the Rockefellers in them, um, you know, they I know that they have over like 204 some odd different trusts. Um, That's correct. Either irrevocable common law trust, something in which that you think that they used a lot of, as far as well, yeah, they, they, yeah, the Rockefellers, mm-hmm. uh, the Duponts, the Gettys, now the Getty, he was he, he was a pretty sharp, shrewd character, uh, but the Rockefellers. What they're able to do, see, once you uh, learn uh, how to utilize a trust, then you are mm-hmm. able to identify how you can set up other trusts to function uh, in different areas. If you're going to say you're going to uh, you're going to uh, purchase a, a, a oil distillery or refinery, but you're going to need mm-hmm. to set up a pipeline. And you're gonna need ships to for distribution, and uh, so you might want to set up a different tri- type of trust to handle that. And that's what I was uh, talking about about understanding each individual's role in the trust. You got you got trustee number one, who's the head trustee, but and this guy he specializes, we'll say, in our uh, oil refinery and distribution. You got trustee number two, he, he specializes in international trade. So you got all these uh, powerful figures, and the, and the most powerful thing that they have or the most valuable thing that they're bringing to the table is knowledge. Right. So he may, they may decide to say, well, we're going to set this up as a corporation, uh, a certain type of corporation. Uh, then we may turn around and, and just do a, uh, an express trust on it, or we may uh, 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 set it up because of uh, where it's located or whatever. We might want to do an ecclesiastical trust. Uh, we may, uh, you know, it, it depends on uh, once you know the operations of trust and you're successful with trust, the type of trust that you're going to use for each operation that you're going to be uh, doing and to be able to funnel the wealth, uh, maintain control over the trust, and maintain maintain um, stability for the beneficiaries. Okay, so um, would a trust necessarily be tax exempt? Well, uh, that depends on the type of trust that you're setting up. Uh, if you we we'll we, we use. Um, we use a ecclesiastical trust or some form of a religious trust or a religious organization that set up a trust within the confines of their institution. Of course, we know uh, that the church is exempt from taxes, but there's nothing in the world right. to keep them from setting up a trust. You, you, you follow me? Right. right. So there are many, okay. many, there's so many different trusts. It's just a matter of, of, of choosing. But before you choose, uh, you should a person should thoroughly understand the mechanics of a trust. 
how it functions. Okay. The, 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 the grantor of the trust, uh, he, he can't go down there messing with the money. <laughs> he can't be <laughs> writing no checks. That's somebody going to jail. And so that's why it's, it's set up uh, as a trust. And you want to make sure that the people that you have in the trust are professionals. Right. That lends stability to the trust. If you got a trust manager, uh, his job is to make sure that uh, he's scouting for other business opportunities uh, to invest in the trust, uh, to, to invest, to make sure that the trust is profitable. And uh, he's in, uh, he always has to be in conjunction with the executive secretary because she's recording everything. She's not going in in a courtroom uh, to deal with any uh, law, but she is aware of everything that's going on with the trust, and she is keeping the records of the trust. And she's keeping the minutes of the meetings. That's very, very important. You've got to have the minutes of the meetings, and that's, that, that's part of the record of how the trust is functioning. Um, okay, okay. So, when we're talking about, so basically a trust would be one similar to a corporation then, in that regard. Well, um, a trust is a trust. However, um, a trust can function with uh, part of its tentacles being a corporation. Uh, but uh, in mm. my opinion, that, that will always seem to be temporary uh, when you're dealing with, with trust because you understand that uh, it ain't, it, you know, you don't want to build your trust on the fact that you're trying to uh, avoid or evade taxes. Uh, you want to make sure that there's purity throughout your trust. And so when you say corporation, now we're talking about uh, an arm of the trust. The trust, the trust, a trust, uh, in my opinion, uh, based on what I know about a trust, a trust does not function like a corporation. Right. That's just my opinion based on uh, what I know. I, I have um, a couple of books that I, uh, uh, been well, quite a few books on trust, but my most uh uh, the ones I like the most is uh, Volume One and Volume Two of Passing the Buck, the Art of Passing the Buck, and uh, they give okay, you. Okay, so what would be uh, the best? What would be the best way in order to run a trust then? Um, since we're talking on, on basically of a, a trustee board, um, of course we know that there has to be a trust, there has to be trustees, as well as also beneficiaries. Um, so mm-hmm. how would we? How would that be ran? Um, you know, in your point of view. Well, let's let's use a, let's use an example. Uh, we'll say that uh, we just take the uh, Morris Science Temple of America. Mm-hmm. Okay, Noble Drew Ali set up a trust, and mm-hmm. uh, it's it, it my understanding that he set up an express trust. Okay, so uh, we got. Uh, Morris, Morris Temple's all over the United States. Right. And so uh, if I was if I was the um, we'll say if I was the advisor to a trust or agent to a trust just as an advisor, what I would do is I would gather the heads of each temple and they would be the uh, grantors of the trust. Then I would get right. the shop is uh, men second in line or, or what have you as the trustees that will be educated uh, by uh, lawful and legal professionals. Then I would select secretaries, and, and this is from each temple, secretaries from each temple to record the information, to share information to make sure that the records come out right across the board. And of course, the remainder uh, uh, of the um, the largest portion of that trust would be the members, uh, the regular members of the temple. They would be the beneficiaries of the temple, and then we could function as a trust because the trustees, their job is to handle all you know the business ends, uh, to uh, 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 do what they are supposed to do their 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 duties as the uh, trust. But the grantors oversee the trust and provide wisdom and knowledge 
to uh, the members of the trust, including the beneficiaries. Okay. So, but, but everything um, is on contract. So, what I'm saying, so when you look at what Prophet Noble Drawley set up as far as the more science symbol of America, him and everyone else's signature upon that 1099, um, in which I was filed in Cook County, um, they were the trustees. Okay. Um, I'm, I haven't got to look at it, but if I mm-hmm. look at it and I look at the signatures on there, I can pretty much identify the position that each individual uh, carried. Okay. So okay. It, would, it, would, it would seem to me that if Noble Raleigh Lee said the express trust, it had to be the grant of the trust. And he had to have uh, people in line to be the trustees and the secretaries and so on and so forth. But we know who the beneficiary is. Right. Okay, okay. Well, you talked about the irrevocable. How does the irrevocable um, common law trust compare to the revocable common law trust? Okay, so that's that's uh, two different trusts. Both of them are powerful in their own scope. Uh, if you're going to have things going on in the trust that expire, uh, or if you're going to dissolve the trust at a certain point in time in history, uh, you have, uh, according to the rules, you can do that because it is a revocable trust. But you mm-hmm. still run into the dangers of uh, scrutiny uh, by the powers that be. A, a, a irrevocable trust is not recorded with the county. It's not mm-hmm. public record. It is private. It is a private mm-hmm. trust, and it functions as a private trust, mm-hmm. opposed to uh, other trusts that have to be recorded, uh, and so on and so forth. And when you got a when you got a will, uh, mm-hmm. when you take a trust versus a will. Uh, a will is always subject to probate. When you hear about right. uh, a lot of uh, famous people, recording artists and so on, and they're fighting over their estate and stuff, well, they had a will set up, and uh, they're fighting mm-hmm. over the, the proceeds. And uh, usually, the court ends up, uh, uh, and lawyers ends up with the majority of the money. But when you set up a trust, mm-hmm. if you got a will, you install that will in the trust. It's held by trust. You see, so that's a whole different ball game. Mm. Mm. Okay, okay. See, each individual, see, all the trustees, uh, they they got their role. They got right. their duties. Uh, the grantor has already told them, well, you know, this individual can do this. You have the power to do this. You have the power to do that. You have the power to do this. You're responsible for this, that, and the other. You're signing the checks. Right. Uh, you're doing investments. You're doing the scouting. That's that's your job. If you got a, 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 a two trustees and uh, they got a dispute, well, that's where the trust protector comes in. He sells all disputes. Okay. So it, it goes so back to the role. Mm-hmm. No, I was going to ask. So that's his role is to um, to um, extinguish any controversy or or um, yeah naysaying. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Any, anything that comes up internally and externally involving that trust, his job is to protect the trust. He he sells all ties if they if they voting. Uh well he he he, mm-hmm. he if it's a tie he 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 says uh if we got a a, a, a trustee that's uh supposed to be terminated uh with a with a trust protector uh he steps in if the if, if the secondary trustee if the if the first or secondary trustee have a have a problem if there's some embezzlement or what have you uh the trust protector steps in and says, hey man uh that's that gotta go. Right. All that's written in the uh, uh all that's written on the contracts. 
Everybody got a copy of the contract. Everybody understand everybody's position in the contract in the beginning. Mm-hmm. That's how that go with okay. the uh, with that uh, irrevocable common law trust. I keep talking right. about that so, because that's my favorite. <laughs> that's favorite. I got you. I got you. All right. So, what would you write up? along with that trust, since it's not going to be put on the county or anywhere, and it's private, um, how would that be set up in that sense? Well, once you, once you um, uh, do up your uh, declaration of trust, uh, everything in that declaration, which in, in, in that, by the way, should be in my opinion, no less than 35 pages. Mm. That covers, even if you have a skeleton uh, of a trust, that covers the expansion of the trust. That covers uh, new people coming into to the trust. That covers what will happen after the grantor uh, passes on. That happens, that, that will define for you uh, what happens if there's Self or embezzlement, or if the head trustee dies, uh, all of that information is recorded in that indenture. Uh, when you when you have a secretary, what happens? Uh, uh, what is to take place if the uh, uh, secretary passes? What happens when the uh, who elects another uh, trust protector if something happens to him? All of this information is recorded in that declaration of trust. Everything from start to finish is spelled out. And once it is hammered out and nailed on the paper, then you want to get several opinions from top professionals before you declare that a functioning trust. That's how important the declaration of trust is because we're talking about a serious operation. Mm -hmm. All right, so... All right. You said this particular type of trust lasts about 25 years. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, 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 it's, it's good for 25 years. That is my mm-hmm. understanding. And it can be renewed uh, on, on that anniversary date. Okay. That's why it's so important for you uh, when you <clears throat> setting this thing up that the beneficiaries mm-hmm. are right there with the grantors. They're right at the feet of the grandmas. They're learning. They're learning what everybody's role is. They're standing back. They're watching. They're learning how to invest. Uh, they're, they're learning from the trustees. They're learning from the secretary. They're learning from the trust protector. They're learning from everybody. So as time go on and the main players begin to leave this life, they are able to function and keep that shield of protection and will it from generation to generation to generation just like the DuPonts, the Gettys, the Rockefellers, uh, 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 their trusts are still in existence today. They are eternal. Mm-hmm. Right. So, um, Brother Zahaka, all right, so what can you do with a irrevocable common law trust? Uh, once everything well, is put together, what you just stated, what, what can you do? You said something about investment. Um, how 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 far can you take this common law trust? Well, you can you can take that uh, into infinity. Um, you, let's take let's take the position of two parties. We'll take the grantor of the trust. He's the overseer of the operation. In order for him to set up a trust, he's got to be willing to relinquish his estate into the hands of another man that is supposed to be trusted called a trustee, all right? From that point forward, the trustee's duty is to uh, uh, make sure that the trust remains healthy, it remains functional, uh, he can relate to, uh, he, he, can, he can hire people, he can fire people, uh, he can, he can, he can uh, 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 interact with the uh, trust manager whose job is to go out out for investments, fuel the trust, uh, the, the whole ball of wax. But the but the uh, the structure is set up where the grantor does not uh, come down because he felt like 
the trustee didn't do his job and say, well, look, I'm going to start doing your job, and uh, I'm going to start signing checks and stuff like that because what he's going to have to do is restructure the trust if he's doing that. He may have to even dissolve the trust and start a new trust. Mm, okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So, um, I guess, you know, we, we definitely talked about the trust and the common law. Um, is there anything else that you want to get on as far as the common law is concerned um, before we get to the contract law? Probably, uh, uh, when we talk about common law, we had to clearly define that. Common law goes all the way back to, to, to nature. Uh, to what you were born with, you see. When people say, "Well, you know," uh, uh, they ask, "Well, you are you a, are you a U.S. citizen?" Well, uh, no, right. I, I, you know, I, I'm a Floridian. <laughs> I'm a Floridian. Mm-hmm. Now, me personally, um, I, I follow uh, uh, the teachings of what the prophet said. The prophet said, "I have brought you everything. Take it and save yourself." He also mm-hmm. said, "Don't flag your you, you, you ID before you appear because it causes confusion." So everything mm-hmm. involving my identity and nationality, which is one and the same, is private, is copyrighted, is patented, is protected, mm-hmm. and is held in a protected mm-hmm. bubble. Now, um, in the event that I'm uh, 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 denationalized, uh, 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 a victim of denationalization, or something in that in that manner, then I will be able to open up uh, that uh, Pandora's box, so to speak. But in the meantime, right. um, I'm a uh, uh, Floridian. Uh, I was born here. I was raised here, and this is where I'm domiciled. I don't have property. Right. I live in a home. I'm domiciled here, and uh, I'm in uh, uh, Jacksonville Territory in Florida Republic. All rights reserved without right. prejudice, UCC 1-308. And uh, that's how I function uh, in commerce. If I have to do mm-hmm. anything in, in, uh, 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 in involving a debt collector or if I'm dealing with uh, some type of official or whatever, uh, these are the credentials. Okay. So the you know that's a, that's how I deal with you know I'm a I'm a a, a a a citizen of the state in which I was born, not a corporate mm-hmm. fiction, uh, not a, a, a I'm not dead I'm I'm alive um I'm not in the cemetery with a gravestone on top of me that's uh, chisel in all capital letters indicating. The day because every every gravestone out there is, is is indicated the same way, so I'm not there. So that means that when you contact me and address me as a corporate physician, you got a wrong man. So we have to deal with that first before we talk about anything else. Right. So now, I do have. Um, is this what right? Does this nationally come nationality comes in at as far as um, being able to um. If you was brought into court, of course, you know, as they say, God forbid, if you did have to go to court, this is now when you were bringing nationality in which that you could break up jurisdiction? Well, yeah, there are people that, that, that do that. But I deal with my strategy is somewhat different. Um, right. If I'm, if, if it's my understanding that uh, uh, I don't flash my ID before you appear, so what I'll do is uh, I make sure that uh, the fight is over. Before I ever get in there, mm-hmm. I'm not going to, you know, because if you, if if I run into a man out in the streets, and that man say, well, uh, you are, uh, you you turn right at a at a, at a, at a red light and you cut on your finger. Well, my first question, who, who? Well, you? All right, well, you know who you are, you know who they go, who you gonna deal with? Because that's the first thing we're gonna deal with. You go, you you dealing with a with, with a man, or are you uh, dealing with a, some corporate freedom or somewhere, or some somewhere. So the first thing I want to do mm-hmm. is uh, I'm gonna get some clarity from your uh, superiors uh, yeah. by by contract, and uh, I'll have uh, my position 
clearly spelled out, and uh, that way we're able to uh, uh, deal with that long before we ever get in a courtroom. Yeah. Now I got a I, I, I got a a uh, document here that I recently had to use uh, not too long ago, and I'll show you what I mean mm-hmm. by that. Okay. And uh, it was involved in uh, some taxes. And uh, I really, you know, when I used this, I really didn't get a chance to use the second document because the, 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 actually the second and third document is the one I really wanted to use. The first one was to, to go out, uh, just to, to go out and test the waters. I'm going to show you what that uh, uh, sounds like. But um, the main one, that I wanted to uh, wanted to use, and didn't get a chance to use that before they told me that they had the wrong guy. <laughs> mm-hmm. so, so I show you what it looked like. Just hold on one second. Let me let me get that up so you understand what what I'm talking about. Um, okay. Okay. Hold on. Be coming up here right here in a minute. First of all, I'm uh. No, that's not what I want right there now. Okay, I got it right here. All right, this document uh, is a uh, notice of counter offer and counter demand. What happened was uh, I was sitting in there in the uh, living room on the computer, and I saw this car pull up out in front of the house. And the guy sat there for the mm-hmm. longest. He said, he said, he said, he said. He's looking at me. I'm looking at him. So finally, I got about the chair. I felt there might have been somebody out there just on the phone or whatever. And I went in the back. And when I came back out, I stayed for a few minutes. When I come back out, uh, he was gone. And I just happened to glance over there at the gate, and I seen this piece of paper sticking out under the no trespass sign on the gate. And so I went and got it off, and it was the uh, people for the tax collector officers. <laughs> They told me, they said, well, uh, your taxes is due, and if you don't pay your taxes, your house will be sold on uh, eight of my days. I said, well, okay, let me get you, and uh, let's go at this. So uh, I got it and brought it in the house and uh, set it on the table. I said, well, I'll get to you. Uh, but before I did, the mailman come up, and then he bought, he bought me a letter from the same people. And saying the same mm-hmm. thing. So what I did is I took it and made copies of it, and I took uh, the counterclaim because it was addressed to the wrong man. That's the first thing we had to deal with. And uh, then I went on into uh, acceptance of his offer because he was he was he was telling me that I owe him uh, his amount of dollars, and uh, but he was he was telling the wrong man that he owed him. So I had to get that straight now. So this is what I uh, right. sent back. It says. Uh, uh, notice Carol on camera the man and uh this is for the uh for the uh uh, uh the gentleman I address it to uh, further I address it to the company and attention to the gentleman. And um mm-hmm. and I can't okay, let's see, let's see what we're gonna do. Okay. I got it right here. But anyway, um, the letter goes like this. It says, please read the following notice thoroughly and carefully before responding. It is a notice. It informs you. It means what it says. The reason why you need to read carefully is simple. I'm offering conditional agreement. This removes controversy. It means that you no longer have any ultimate recourse to a code of law in this matter because there is no controversy upon which it could adjudicate. You always have the option of dragging these conditions into a code of law only to be told that they are indeed perfectly lawful. That is, of course, always your prerogative should you decide to waste your time. For this reason, it is important that you consider and respond to the offer in substance. The interest official form will not suffice, and consequently, it is likely to be ignored by myself without any dishonor on my part. On the other hand, there is a time limit on this agreement being offered. 
it is reasonable and it runs out, then you and all your associate partners are in default, removing any and all lawful excuse on your part from proceeding in this matter. And uh, then I go on to uh, go down on the rest and uh, put my fee schedule in there, let them know how much damages and all of that. And then I uh, put an attachment there for him to rebut and put in the self-addressed stamped envelope that I have re- provided and send this back to me with a full rebuttal to the uh, acceptance of your offer, which is non-negotiable, by the way. Right. And uh, But then after I um, said that to him, um, I was using my general post, and I didn't get a chance to get his response on time so that I can time it and go directly into my default notice. But the default notice was ready. I did call over there, and they told me, oh, yes, it's here. We'll go ahead and uh, we'll uh, uh, fax this over to you. So when I got that, uh, I said, well, okay, since he's uh, responded and surrendered, then I will go ahead and uh, uh, scrap the default notice uh, that I was going to send, which uh, states out the entire fraud involving any mortgage in America. And taxes. So I, but I didn't get a chance to send that to him. But anyway, uh, that was the end of that. No court. And uh, I didn't even have to tell him I was a moor. So that's how I deal with it. It, it doesn't matter uh, what I'm dealing with. Uh, who, uh, I'm going to deal with who they're addressing. Mm-hmm. Because it's, you know you you you, you, you are, if, 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 if it's dealing with a, a man of fiction, a proper noun or an improper right. noun. So, it's just English, as I've right, always right. done. So, mm-hmm. so with that, um, brother um, Tahaka, uh, would you have a copyright trademark trade name? Um, yeah, done. Where it's on your name in all caps, which is your birth name. No, 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 no. I don't need that. Uh, okay. I can put that on the sacred title. Mm-hmm. See, prior to, prior to me, uh, prior to me uh, coming into the knowledge that I uh, had been denationalized and I mm-hmm. was never given a proper name reflecting my nationality and culture, uh, that that became sacred to me, so uh, that's been protected uh, since I, I first started using it. That is my name, and it is connected to mm-hmm. my my nationality and my pedigree. So that's mm-hmm. that's what's protected. Mm-hmm. See the 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 the, the title on the, on the birth certificate. Uh, 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 that's a that's a European uh. Families. Yeah. yeah. So I, 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 you know, that's what they uh, want to try to deal with. Well, we deal with that. Mm-hmm. But as soon as I, as soon as I see the, see the word black, then we got a problem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Right, right, right. I got you. <laughs> I remember one time, it was a good while back, they all, uh, I was downtown in the jailhouse. And uh, I had already sent the, the shelves to my, my little paperwork and stuff. And when I got down there, I noticed that all, all the other inmates on their paperwork, they had they had a uh, raised black. On my paperwork, they didn't even have a word raised on no paperwork from beginning to end. <laughs> I said, okay. I said, boy, look here. I was looking at every piece of paper they were typing up. I said, I need a copy of that. I need a copy. He said, okay. And he gave me a copy of it. And I'm looking at it. I'm looking for something. I'm looking for something. He said, well, I don't know what you're looking for, but that's the paperwork you're asking for. But uh, everybody in there had it. Is that me? Mm. All I needed was a copy of it. On contract, that's all yeah. I needed. All you do is yeah. put it on paper one time. 
I didn't get now nah, scrap of nothing. So it's up to each individual. Um, and I try to encourage people to uh, read and uh, learn how to deal with individuals, uh, uh, especially as debt collectors or whatever. You know, you want to win that before you ever uh, go into a courtroom. The fight should be over before you ever go in there. And it ain't about it. It's not so much about the documents. It's about you knowing who you are. Right. And if you know that, then you can you you if, if if you know who you are, then you 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 can do some things. Sure. No people know when I file this document here and I file that document and uh, uh they, they ain't done that yet, I and then, well, wait a minute, hold on, hold on a minute. The documents you find first of all, have you read half of them? Do you <laughs> do you know any information in it? Can you recite any of it in it without looking at the documents? What, what is it that you got a contract? What is it that you know about your contract that you can tell somebody about? Mm-hmm. So that's 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 what happens when you I deal with contract law. If you understand the whole country operates on contract law. Sure did. Um, isn't the Constitution itself a trust or contract uh-huh. uh, based on contract law? I said, isn't mm-hmm. the Constitution itself a trust based on contract law? Yeah, that's right. It's true mm-hmm. document. Mm-hmm. It has signatures on it. Right. It's in writing. It's on paper, on parchment. Yeah, it's a contract. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, our problem is, uh, a lot of us, we have been accepting everybody else's contract and panicking instead of uh, learning the game and uh, sending our own contracts the other way and enforcing them. And you bring a debt in the question, uh, you, you, they're making you an offer, go ahead and accept the offer. Uh, you know, count off and make your count off and non negotiable. Uh, cover yourself. You put your fee schedule in there. You can get your uh, uh, case law put in there if you want to. And uh, uh, put your attachment in there. And uh, tell them when you're going to need them to rebut the affidavit. And uh, send it to them certified mail with a time limit on it. And uh, you're ready to roll. If they don't respond at all, just give you a certificate of service, a certificate of non response. Stick it in a folder with the date and time that you sent, that you uh, did it because they didn't respond and go on to your next default notice. And every time they don't right. respond behind a note, do a, do a, 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 a certificate of non-response and slip it in that folder and stick it in between them documents. Then take the uh, whole thing down there if you want to file and uh, file. Indeed. All right, so Based on the Constitution, it says that um, that we can contract is, is is on our own free will, I guess, as much as possible if, if we so choose to. Um, yeah. What's the fight in your contract law in that regard? Well, the, the United States, the, the 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 United States does not have an out of gration quota. Anybody mm-hmm. free to go. The United States does not interfere with your right to make contracts. Right. I, I had a, uh, <laughs> I created a identification. I created my uh, own license plate to put on my on my uh, uh, on my vehicle with that understanding. And uh, the cops, they were trying to figure out what was going on and stuff. And I told them, I said, well, you know, the United States doesn't interfere with a man's right to make contracts. Yeah, but that's illegal. I said, I'm telling you about legal or illegal. I'm talking to you about the law. <laughs> well, we, we're enforcing the law. I said, no, you ain't. You're enforcing public policy in the region. You ain't no officer of the law. Boy, look here. You should see him. I feel kind of sorry for him because they <laughs> When I told him, he, he said, we ain't even no officer of the law. <laughs> 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 because, hey, 
policy. He, they got rules and regulations, statutes and ordinances are just that. Statutes and ordinances. Don't have anything to do with law. All law derived from nature. Real law. Yeah. Sure indeed. I was I was uh uh over to a uh a friend's house today and uh they had the T V on on the news and uh they they came out with this thing because they got the the manatee in the river and the, the police gonna be out in full force they gonna be writing tickets and if you ain't slowing down and you 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 speeding through this area where you see them signs at we gonna pull you over and we gonna check to see if you uh got uh life jackets in your boat and and give you a ticket a ninety three dollar ticket for uh, 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 uh almost uh, 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 being in a position to injure a manatee, mm. and and and, because, and, I, and they're just getting out of ticket, getting out of ticket, and all the people getting the ticket, and uh, 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 the people that do, they tell, well, you know, uh, they're uh, they're gonna they're gonna be out enforcing the law, and I'm like, what? No law. <laughs> what you what you talking about? And all the people, they are in the prison. They. That they are, uh, are all lawful. No, it ain't. That's something you know, I tell you what, you need to look up a look up a case. I don't know. You probably already checked it out. Uh, Frank Knowles. You ever heard of that? Mm-hmm. Frank Knowles. Frank Knowles. Okay. You, you you know what happened with him? Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he, he 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 had done he had done done done, done talk, told him in the courtroom. He said, "Hey, look here, man. This is my land. You ain't got no no jurisdiction over here." And uh, uh, he beat him down up in there. And uh, this man had done. Uh, I think it was what it was, kill a deer, and the deer went over on his property and died. And the man tried to come over there and retrieve the deer. He said, "You can't come over my land and get the deer." And uh, and my dear, and I shot him, and you know I could do this. He said you can't get nothing over him on my land. Well, I'll, I'll call the authorities and say you go call him. And they called him, and and, <laughs> and and the state troopers came out there and told him, hey, we we you can't go on that land, and we can't either. And he called the FBI, the FBI told him the same thing, we can't go on there either. Hmm. Frank Knowles, right there on, right there on Google. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, I, let me look in here. I can bring up the, um, let me see. Okay, okay, I should have it right here. Uh, no, 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 out in California. I think it's, it's 305. Let me see. I, I'll find it here in a minute. But anyway, uh, studying, uh, studying the common law is very, very, uh, very, very important. Uh, we, uh, watch every missile. Uh, federal zone. Uh, but anyway, I found it. Okay. But uh, that boy messed him up pretty good, man. He shut him down because it was people were saying, "Well, you know, you you can't own land in America." Frank, Frank knows did. He on here. Right. But um that's that's the um that's the route that uh that uh I take. Indeed. When dealing with them. No argument, no murs, no fuss. Uh you you say oh you're dead, you say I'm this, that and the other, you know, and you 
you know, let me know who you're talking to and uh, right. all of that stuff. And then we can uh, right. we can take it from there. Sound like your phone breaking up a little bit. I was saying, so it's um, basically conditional accepted for value. Well, you accepting um, you accepting all for every every everything. See, first of all, there's no money in America, and so when somebody mm-hmm. calls you and tell you I'm dead, all you got to do is ask ask them a question. You know, because I got a, a a a list of questions here. I asked. I said, well, are you, you know, are you asking me to pay you in federal reserve notes, which is property that belongs to someone else, and in this case, the Federal Reserve Bank, is that what you're asking me for, or, or are you asking me to give you silver or gold? Now, I don't know if it's illegal either way he does it, but if you say I owe you a debt, I'm trying to pay it, I just need to know how you want it. And if you, I got one question here. It says, uh, please provide a copy of the two-party contract containing both parties' signature regarding the alleged debt owed to you or your employers. Put your name here. Sign your name underneath that. The next question is, as a secure party and acting in private and in honor, I have to ask if you or your employers are uh, asking me, a living man, to give you property for payment belonging to someone else, in this case, the Federal Reserve Bank. If so, put your name here and sign underneath. The next question is, if a living man or a living woman need permission to travel upon the land referred to as the United States of America, please indicate, print your name here, sign your name here. Please use the self-addressed staff envelope to return this filled out signed document along with all requested attachments as your proof of an existing debt. Next question is please provide proof of any valid two-party contract with signatures which compels me, a living man, to give the clerical court agent so-and-so any real money in the form of silver or gold for the alleged debt in the amount of $1,100 as stated by your office or secretary on or about the such and such a date. Sign your name here. Print your name here. Mm-hmm. Please provide a, a proof of claim to all points listed in this notice of counter offer, counter demand, a debt settlement, and full rebuttal to lawful affidavit. See Exhibit A2. Please use the self addressed stamped envelope provided for your full rebuttal. And uh, so on and so forth. Furthermore, I claim that the intentional blurring of the lines with smoke and mirrors, deception, outright lies are too numerous to mention. False claims as to the well settled division between the Crown and the United States Corporation create a legal entity known as a person. And the flesh and blood creation of the creator known as a man is nothing short of theft, fraud, breach of trust, and forced slavery, a heinous criminal activity of the most odious form. If you clearly understand this point, please put your name here and sign here. And uh and then I go on and uh I'll go ahead and get that baby uh 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 sign stamped and notarized and uh send it on over there to mm-hmm. him certify me with the term seat. And I'm marking on my calendar so I can get a full rebuttal. And uh, mm-hmm. if you're not willing to do that, then uh, we all down up in default and all that. And uh, we're ready to bring it to the table then. But that's where the fight begins and ends, right there. Right there. With your, with your consent. Because mm-hmm. that's not, I said, with your consent. Because mm-hmm. that's how they get over it, by, by, us, by, by the consent factor. Well, yeah. No, they can't. have, uh, but all of, mm-hmm. all of them, we had to remember all of them, only have limited liability. What you want to do right. is put them on notice of the fact that you have full uh, your liability. All rights reserved without prejudice, UCC 1-308. 
You taking full responsibility for your property. And if you got any contract with them, they need to provide it. Mm-hmm. If they're assuming uh, that I owe them a debt because they, they call a fiction, they, they're assumed against the wrong man because we got a problem. Yes, sir. It's all on the all on contract. It's all lawful. Ain't got nothing to do with legal. All lawful. Okay, so it's all it's not legal, it's lawful. And tell us about that. How what's the difference between legal and lawful, you know, um, well, can something be mm-hmm. lawful? Uh, goes all the way back to through nature to the creator. Legal right. is all man made rules, regulations, guidelines, and uh, that 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 has only to do. With uh, federal employees, of federal citizens, uh, or citizens mm. of, of the United States, which is a, a corporation, that doesn't have anything to do with a man or a woman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's 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 how that goes. The legal, legal mm. statutes and ordinances are just what they say they are. Statutes and ordinances. They ain't got nothing to do with law. Not True. one thing a thing. I asked a judge one time, I, you know, he asked me, well, how you plead? I said, well, uh, I, I want to plead not guilty because I just want to be given the opportunity to come back in this building to lay on the table the difference between legal and lawful. When I told him that, he said, I'll be right back. Got up, went in the back. And I got I to gotta figure out what to do with him. <laughs> I, can't, I can't keep him loose up in here with that. I got to sit the fuck back. He looks like he's ready. So what he did, he said, you got all these tires down here, you're going to have to come back down here on any one of these tires. I said, mean, okay, you got me. Because I ain't got that kind of time. So I plead no contest. It's all right. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to throw it all out. <laughs> Get you out of your tube. <laughs> you learn the difference between legal and lawful. Not illegal and legal. That's, that's you, you dealing with a, uh, two sides of the same apple. You want two different apples. There's lawful and then there's legal. And you want to you want to uh, uh, master uh, knowing the difference between both of them. And everything that I deal with, when I deal with them, I only deal with them with the law. The yeah. law don't show up in the courtroom until you do. You bring all the law. True. Sure. So you you it determines depends on what kind of law you want to bring. Yeah. How you going how you gonna bring it? Mm. Okay. People just have uh, different ways, but you don't wanna get down, don't don't run the risk of bogging down into the into the legal aspect of nothing. Right. You wanna make sure you, you deal with law and then you you be all right. Mm-hmm. You got three different branches inside the United States. You got the judicial branch, the legislative branch, and the executive branch in the United States. Uh, uh, when we when we learn uh, uh, everything that we could possibly learn about common law, uh, then we can uh, we can do a whole lot of different things. Mm-hmm. Now they have uh, they have also learned how to mess with folk. Uh, and uh, especially when they see the law coming, they try to try to shut the door on you. 
Keep on getting in there with it. <laughs> I didn't know they can't nothing they can do with that. Can't you know with that? Not when the law not when the, when you come in there with the law. Right. Um you gonna go out, come back in, brother Doc, because we're gonna play your commercial here. And you know that you got one of my commercials. Okay, well go ahead, go ahead. Let me hear this here. Huh? <laughs> and um <laughs> well, you got- you know, <laughs> Um, afterwards, okay. and, um, you know, and continue on with the discussion about contract law. Okay. One more time. Our foreclosure killer package not only comes along with the necessary documents that you need, but also your very own personal coach to walk you through the process of saving your home. If you've been foreclosed on already, or if you've received documents stating that you'll be foreclosed on, or if you are already in the court fighting a foreclosure, contact the Hawker Amana L. Bay, 904-303-9061. Also visit our website at www.newdebtelimination.com. Stop foreclosure on your property. Let's stop this unlawful practice. Contact me, 904 904- Three zero three nine zero six one before seven p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Peace. Yeah. ATG above the dome. Trap of freedom. A family tradition, heritage, the missing links, spiritual miracles, the awakenings, the walking sphinx. It's time to eat. Food for thought. The meta magician. Holy rainwater flows off my altar, channel through the seasons, elevate the reasons, what's the purpose of life to the living, death to the conscious, at the end of days, clash of the titans, zombies running rampant, Christ in the pamper, looking for a lamp, revving at the church, plugging in the amp, rock of the ages, son of the undead, vampire, a moral rage, I bleed red ink on the page, words and truth, no signature, Here's the blur, from invisible literature, sitting at the dock of the base with Otis, having rituals, turn the lights off, it can get real quick, sir, milk and pot mix, I'm in search for a fix, walking backwards, looking forwards, patiently waiting, don't ignore it, holding two swords like peace signs aimed at your boy. into flight, hawk eyesight, interdimensional terabytes, fuel for the journey, some lay a fuel for the gurney, colored in the book of law, no need for a journey, I turn the page, feel the strip like a doctor coming out the cage, I'm the lion, fed grain, sticks and stones, no pain, a worker's only worth his gain, attempting to keep my inner sane, with lifestyle changes, highs and mountain plains, seven thoughts, Seven vaults, no faults, who's to blame? It ain't the same, they take your names. I feel the sun, it ain't no fun if the homie can't have none. I see you run like who's pain like none. It seems frightening, exciting. I go with streaming lightning. I'm the Nick and Logan at night. Back with Brother Tahaka we talking tonight on trust law, common law, and contract law. All right, we're going to get back into the contract law. First, you got to give to us, Brother Tahaka. All right, I'm, uh, I'm back. Um, All right. One thing I want to uh, uh, say about uh, 
contracts is that is a that is a very very uh very very important uh, thing for everybody to understand. Uh, everything you do in this country, <clears throat> it's a serious involves a contract. Uh, you cannot go into or uh, exit jail without a contract. Uh, you can't uh, uh, deal with voting without a contract. You can't. You you can't even die and go to the morgue or, and go to the cemetery without a contract. <laughs> I mean, everything operates on contract. Everything though. You go to right, the store. You want to buy. Always, mm-hmm. you always see some new. But you always see some new more, brother Tahaka, who just came in talking about you don't need uh-huh. no paperwork. You don't need. You don't need none of that. <laughs> Okay, well, you um, the that? thing is, I've, I've, I've talked to them and uh, stuff, and what we got to understand is you got to look at uh, the situation that uh, everybody in the United States is in. First of all, uh, the sheriff's department don't, don't know nothing about law. Right. Police officers don't know nothing about law. You got yeah. lawyers and attorneys that don't know nothing about law. And I knew that for a fact because I've sat right down uh, across the table from them and uh, put a, a inch and a half thick uh, documents on the table about mortgages. And uh, he picked it up and he looked through it. He said, uh, "He says some of this stuff I've seen before, but, but, but there's a lot of this stuff in here I ain't never seen before." And uh, right. so I said, "Well, you you supposed to know all of that." Because you're a lawyer. He said, shit, mm-hmm. I doubt that. They ain't taught me none of this in school <laughs> because they are not no, they teaching them mm-hmm. the law. Mm-mm. They're not teaching the law. Mm-mm. So Mm-mm. you have They're to uh, educate yourself uh, and just remember what the prophet said. Uh, uh, he, he brought everything to you. Take it and save yourself. We got this thing where we Looking for somebody to save us. Uh, no, you mm-hmm. got uh, you got eyes, ears, nose, mouth. You can talk. You got to read, study, and understand, and uh, formulate your contracts or understand your contracts and, and be able to put them somewhere and be able to use them. Uh, if you're not willing right. to read and understand, uh, it's going to be very very difficult for you. Yes. Yeah. So contract is a uh, 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 contract. Contract is it. That's why they uh, came out with the Uniform Commercial Code. Uh, that's it. Right. That's the Bible of business in in, in the country. Right. Because the law, you know, the the, the, the law. Uh, when you're talking about the law, you're talking about dealing with men and women. Now I got this. Uh, right. I found this thing on uh, Frank Knowles here. All you all all the listeners have to do is just type into Google X parte E X dot P A R T E Frank Knowles K N O W L E S and it's found at the number five and then Cal C A L dot reports three hundred in parenthesis eighteen fifty five. And this is what he's stating in there. This was his his his, his defense in there. Frank Knowles says this says that technically speaking, there is no such thing as a citizen of the United States and explains why. One must first be a citizen of a state, and by reason of this citizenship, one is then a citizen of the United States of America. Mm-hmm. So that's what Frank Frank Knowles says. Okay. Now, if we look at um, all of the people that look like me and you inside the state that you live in and inside the state that I live in, uh, before I even knew anything about or more, uh, I was considered myself a man. So I want to know how or when... How or when is it, and what? When did it happen that be, when I became a more, uh, I stopped being a man? Exactly. 
So that's just, that's just the first thing, uh, in my opinion, now this is just my opinion. This is the way I go at it, you know. And uh, mm-hmm. then after that, uh, whatever comes after that, then uh, uh, I deal with that. Mm-hmm. We got uh, we got all these folks out there battling, battling. Oh, you know, I'm not a U.S. corporate citizen. Like, okay, well, if you ain't, then what are you? And explain why you are. Right. If you if uh, if you uh 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 say you are more, then uh, what is it that makes you a more? What is the historicity that you know? Uh, it makes you more, yeah. and we it is seen to be kind of difficult for a lot of people to understand that before you learn anything about contract law, before you get out there with jurisdiction and status and all that stuff, uh, is the most important thing you need to know is who you is, who are you, and uh, uh, your ancient story because that's where your power at. Yeah. You want to know that first. Mm-hmm. That that show circles a whole lot of stuff. There's no who you are. Right. And then you reflect you reflect that in your correspondence to their their, their collectors. You you dealing right. with debt collectors or uh, uh, people trying to foreclose you and stuff like that? Wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know what I mean? You got it a little bit twisted there. Let me put this hand down and uh, chew on that a little <laughs> while. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's that's very very important. Is knowing who you are. I don't know if you if you uh, listen to uh, this lady. Her name is uh, Mary Croft. You ever listen to Mary Croft? She's the one who goes. Okay. Um, uh, um, the, the um, corporate bur- uh, bureaucrats. Yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. boy, she got a she 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 she, she wear them out, boy. She said she had one of them calls. She had a mess muscle so bad. She had a beat them beat Chase Manhattan Bank down to the dirt, and uh, they turned over the stuff to a little third party debt collector. They come contacted her. She said, "What you contact me? I just got through beating your boss, and then what, what, what you gonna do?" <laughs> she put that whammy on him, boy. And yeah, she tell you quick, it's all about knowing who you are. Yeah, indeed. Men and women. Sir. And that's what I had to add about the contract. You know, you want to study the contracts. Uh, if you're setting up a trust, uh, study uh, other indentures. Uh, you can, if you get the right material, you can study some of the declarations of trust of some of the most powerful uh, 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 trusts that set up on the planet. And you see how they set up, and uh, you can go ahead and start structuring your stuff. And when you start structuring your stuff, then your your stuff is 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 is, is, is good. If you're gonna use a trust, yeah. it's all about yeah. business. And we got to, we, we sure got to learn the difference between uh, religion and spiritualism. We right. got to get that on the field, too. Indeed. And you have another question? Um, let's go to the phone line. Let's see. Do you have any questions? Um, anyone who has any questions, give us a call at 563-999-3738. That's 563-999-3738. All right, give us a call. Um, let me see. No, Brother Taka, there's no questions right now. Um, but I can ask you about this. When you look at common law, you know that some states do operate on the common law. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is that is that you over there beeping?
So, when we look at some states, some states operate under common law. Um, a lot of states don't operate under common law. So, um, you know, what do you think about that? Like, for example, in North Carolina, um, General Statute 4 1 states that North Carolina operates under common law. Okay. You know, some states don't. Like, for example, Ohio. Um, even though Virginia is said to be a common law wealth state, um, they don't operate on a common law um, um, like that. So, I mean, what would be some of the things in the state as far as being able to operate on the contract law? Well, what I would, in any state that, I, that, I, that, I, that I'm in, I'm, uh, I'm in that state as a man. And mm-hmm. uh, when you say common law, can you hear me? Mhm. Loud and clear. Okay. If I'm if I'm in that state, I'm in that state as a man. I'm not trying to go in and 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 figure out whether they did, whether or not they're gonna let me uh, be a man or not. You know, I just stack it up and uh, you know, put it together and uh, just uh, go ahead and uh, file me file me a lawsuit so I can lay the law out on the table. Right. I don't I don't know no I don't know no states in the United States that can uh that's pre- prepared in a courtroom to deal with a, a man lively. Right. I, I don't I don't I don't know no 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 place like that. If I was if if there was somebody that, that, that took me to a courthouse talking about uh I I don't want my debt, I would go in there with one piece of paper and say, Well look, I'm here to Sell this matter, I just need you to sign it right here, clear the show that I owe you this debt. I got a, I got a, a, a bag of silver right here to take a few pieces out and put it on the table and say, I mean, you need. Right. Now, if he, if he, if he touched that silver, he's going to jail. If he, <laughs> <laughs> if he, if he signed that paper, the judge gonna drop in here and start shaking his head and say, "Boy, he's he stupid." <laughs> oh yeah, man. You know, I, you know, he, he, he tell me, he said, "Well, how do you plead? I ain't here to, uh, uh, uh you know, no plea. I'm here to tell, sell a tax matter." <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you got to know. Uh, uh, my favorite, uh, one of the favorites that I like to listen to is brother, uh, brother Carl Lentz. And the reason why I, uh, I'm saying this is I'm not saying because the morals, uh, the, the morals, uh, they got the shutdown. But the problem is, uh, everybody, uh, uh, that is a moral don't know how to use it. Right. That's true. You see, that's the problem. So to keep them from going up in there. And uh, we right. and ain't ready to have cop and all of that. Uh, let's learn something else. And uh, that you can use it till you master uh, the other stuff. Or you get in a position uh, to use other stuff. Let's use what's available to you as a man or a woman. And uh, then, we can, then we can do some things and be successful at some things. It's all about a, a, a achieving something. Right. You know, That's true. Go out, uh, all messed up, you know. Well, you know, so and so, no Ali says so. Hey, people looking at you like, hey, who, who, who are you talking about? We don't know about that boy. You go in jail. You, you got, <laughs> so you got to, you got to be able to uh, lay stuff down. I had uh, the Grand Sheik of uh, Temple Number uh, Thirteen on, on the show the other day. And uh, he had his stuff together. He, he showed him the, the lawyers and stuff and documented and said, man, you, man, can't touch you. But right. everybody don't know that. So if you don't know that, don't be going out half cocked because you just found out you a mo. Don't know nothing about your ancient story. Can't even hardly right. spell the word history that good. And uh, standing right. up in them I'm in the full courtroom telling me I'm a mo. You can't do this to me. You can't. <laughs> no, that's foolishness. Come on, man. Yeah, but that's what happens, though. 
That's what happened. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. Too many times. Yeah, I mean, I mean they have them all over the place. Right, right. Huh? I said, yep, and then try to blame you for it. Well, yeah, 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 because we uh, we got a lot of folks that got a habit of they won't read, they won't do no research, yeah. they won't do nothing on their own, they want to call you and just ask you. And right. Uh, right. you give them some advice, then they run and do that. And after they do that, they sit back and they, uh, all the documents and stuff and the books and stuff they're supposed to read, they read none of that. And look at none of that. And we're waiting to call you again. Something go wrong where you told me so and so and so and so and so. <laughs> it's amazing, what? man. Uh, I go through it all the time. Uh, on my uh, website, we have different packages and stuff. And uh, once you get that stuff, I'm gonna send it to you. But what I'm, mm-hmm. uh, what I want you to do is I want you to take it and not don't just read it and uh, try to hurry up and get to the next piece. Read that so you can tell me you don't read it and don't know nothing. Ain't done no research. Ain't looked up noun words. Haven't defined anything. And then start asking me, well, okay, where did I start? The documents are designed to tell you where to start if you read them. Right. But a lot of folks won't do that. They they they, they yep. won't do it. it I, I don't understand it. Is is a phenomenon to me, man. I got a a a, a whole a bookcase I built. I had to build another one. And then I'm reading. I have books everywhere. I got to start putting some of these books back on the shelf. I be mean, I be reading them. Be starting them. So if there's a problem, I'm able to uh do all stuff off the top of my head. Yep. I don't have to go get no book off the shelf to do nothing. I type up some documents off the top of my head. When I see where it's supposed to go, uh, they, they get that and open it up and get to reading that, they be about to have a stroke. Oh, my mm-hmm. God. What is this? Good day. What? <laughs> give it to a lawyer. See what they say. Lawyer, give back the other. We don't want none of that. <laughs> but if you do the research and you study and you define the words in the documents, because if you if you doing a document, you're gonna sign that document. You're gonna take that document, get it notarized, and stamp. You're gonna send it to somebody. That's your contract. You need to know no no know everything you can about that. You need to learn that. You need to be able to define that. And I had a, a, a brother one time told me, said, "Man, went in a <laughs> brother went in a courtroom." And uh, gave the document, gave the final documents in the case. The judge got the documents and looked at them and said, "Man, these here, this is beautiful." He said, "Did you do that?" Said, yes, sir. He said, "Wow, man, it's beautiful, it's colorful, and oh, man, man, I've never seen such a beautiful document." He said, "You got right down here under the bottom down here. It says uh, all rights reserved.' What does that mean?" <laughs> yeah. And the brother said, "Well, that's that's part of the document. That that means I'm reserving my rights." And yeah, but but what does it mean though? Uh, well, right. uh, you know, is 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 the rights of being reserved? <laughs> he said, "Okay, well, you got on a, a behind that uh, without prejudice. What does that mean?" He didn't know that either. He didn't know it. Right. Mm. That's a shame, man. You got a document that's your contract. If you are going to send a contract somewhere, you need to know exactly what was in that contract. If somebody questions you about uh, what's in that uh, contract, then you should be able to explain that to them. Now, when it comes to uh, uh, all rights reserved and uh, without prejudice, what may be a good idea, if you are uh, putting that on a document, then you need to put on there what that means. Mm-hmm. You need to define it in the document. Mm-hmm. When it says uh, 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 all right word, without prejudice, you need to define that and put it all in a nutshell right there so they can read it. And uh, after you say it, here's the definition of what it means. So you may even have to ask me, here, go in your hand. And if you do ask me, I can't wait to tell you for the record. Mm-hmm. 
a lot of things you can you can do. You could take uh, 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 one document and uh, uh, remove information from one document and put in another document to make your contract say what you wanted to say because that's how you go enforce it. It's your contract. Indeed. Well, how we get in trouble is we get contracts from other people, and we don't read that either. And they say, you know, we're getting this outrageous bill. Where did, it, where, where did it come from? Where did it, read the contract. I didn't agree to this. Read the contract. They got your signature right there. So you mean to tell me you signed something you didn't read? Who fought it that? <laughs> <laughs> police been guilty of this too now. Don't get it twisted now. The police done been guilty. Uh, 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 gave a man a, a, a ticket. He wrote on it all rights reserved. The cop got it and signed it. And they got it in the courtroom. The judge, <laughs> judge say, uh, whose signature is here? He said, this your signature right there? And the police was saying, yeah. He said, well, what does that say under the bottom of that? It said, all rights reserved that president. Why does everything but a fool? But <laughs> uh, it's amazing, man. Read your contract. If you got a contract, read it, understand it before you uh, send it to anybody, so that you can enforce it. Indeed. Be able to elaborate on anything that they come out about that contract. Now, if you know who you are. And you let them know that you know who you are, and they are sure that you know you are. Then they don't ask you no questions. Cause they're scared you go to tell them. <laughs> they, they're afraid you're gonna tell them. True. So contract is very very powerful, and uh, we should practice uh, doing up some contracts. You know, something happened. Uh, somehow out there in those streets or something, you're supposed to be able to come home, sit down, formulate some contracts, go through the motion of getting them signed and notarized and stuff, go straight to the print shop, go get your four copies of it, and uh, go to the post office, send it to them certified mail or, or registered mail or however you're going to do it, and uh, mark your calendar so you'll be able to roll the next boom. You know, get that fight right. taken care of before you ever get inside of Code High. You know, the only reason you go in a courthouse is when you done one. That's the only reason you go in a courthouse is when you done one. That's the way I see it. Right. Not when you spend the fight, when you done one. Right. So your process would be to send it to the clerk of court. Um, your well, whoever, they, whoever they are. It, it depends on whoever it is that you're dealing with. Right. In this case, uh, I, I was dealing with the uh, tax collector of the clerk, clerk of course right. down here. So I right. addressed the clerk of course and attention dealing with him as a man. Mm-hmm. Right, right. So if, if push come to show up and I had to sue somebody, uh, uh, I, 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 I was suing the tax collector's office, and uh, this is the man that's accepted the documents and uh, failed to come out for the bail on the rebuttal of a lawful affidavit. And a lawful affidavit stands as truth. And a rebutted affidavit stands as truth, point blank. So once he get that bomb in his lap, he throw it in the garbage can, then, uh, hey, somebody in trouble. Got you. That's how I, I deal with them. I got you. I got you, Brother Tiger. Well, we got a few minutes left. Anything you want to say in closing? Well, I just want to say um, uh, when it comes to trust, before you attempt to run out and set up a trust, uh, learn everything that you possibly can learn about a trust. Uh, when it comes to uh, contract law, learn everything you can about contract law. Start with the history of everything that you're going to be dealing with it because that's where your power lies. And uh, practice when you're formulating your contracts, define every word in your contract. So when you put that contract down, you're able to stand there without that contract in your hand and fire on all eight cylinders to the point where they don't want you to say nothing else, no more, because you're shooting too good up in here. 
That's all I want to say about that. <laughs> But that was plenty, you know. That was beautiful, right there, um, brother Don. Cause we appreciate you, um, appreciate you coming on once again. And I'm gonna play your commercial one more time. So everybody can get in contact with you, cause you know that's what All we right. have to do. Make sure we support each other. And here you go. That's right. One more time. Okay. Our foreclosure killer package not only comes along with the necessary documents that you need, but also your very own personal coach to walk you through the process of saving your home. If you've been foreclosed on already, or if you've received documents stating that you'll be foreclosed on, or if you're already in the court fighting a foreclosure, contact the Hawker Amana L. Bay, 904-303-9061. Also visit our website at www.newdebtelimination.com. Stop foreclosure on your property. Let's stop this unlawful practice. Contact me, 904-303-9061, before 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Peace. All right, everybody heard Brother Tahaka say um, contact him. And um, also make sure it's before 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time because he ain't taking all them late calls, y'all. Um, Cause y'all know how y'all do. Y'all wait till ten and eleven, twelve o'clock at night to call somebody about something. Um, so for the Hawkins, so I can say, <laughs> make sure y'all get it in by seven p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right. <laughs> all right, well, my brother, doctor? I certainly appreciate you. All right, all right, appreciate you, for the doctor. All right, y'all take care. Good night, everybody. All right, good night, good night. And in closing, y'all, you know what? You got to play. Warning, you have entered the realm of the gods. So give us your mind and your full attention. So you say you deal with esoteric information? I never heard of such. Well, you're in for a treat. Block talk, block talk, this is the block talk. I lean L Bay dropping jewels every day. Block talk, block talk, this is the block talk. Metaphysical, we deal with the spiritual. Block talk, block talk, this is the block talk. I lean L Bay dropping jewels every day. Block talk, block talk, this is the block talk. Metaphysical, we deal with the spiritual. So you claim to be a god? Damn right I'm a god. The maker, the owner, cream of the planet Earth, father of civilization, god of the universe. Wow. Tune in or lose, friend. All strategies apply mathematically. The information he drop is real powerful. So get your notepad, it's more than an hour full. Watch your jaw, the crew with watch us talk. Indigenous to the land, wherever we stand. First world order, we bring it at home in the first quarter. Invisible lines don't apply, we cross borders. Silly rabbit, knowledge for gods. No matter where you resign, lies, temple of Mars. So don't fret or proceed with hesitation. Just tune in to blog talk to get the information. Peace. Peace to the gods. You already know, man. Yo, yo, yo. Bohemian wizardry, you fraud them thieves be killing me. The enemy is close. We both lies on our identity. I feel like he who stepped, architect like M. Hotel. Son had the son himself to guard deadly with the art. I fit dark with a slit heart. You can feel it in your bone marrow before the shit starts. Standing in the cold with a scroll that was written in gold. Behold the old glimpse that was never untold. Infinite like the eight, seven dwelling in your melon. No felon, though the unrighteous say that I'm rebellious. I'm primal, my rhyme suicide. I worship no idols. My style, all the gems going down in a spiral. You stuck in your root. My intelligence passed my cool. The God is the truth. Every time I step in the booth, you stepped on the stoop. Got Scoop the swoop in my loop. Do the knowledge, whack them seeds, get played like blue. It was the son of the saw, a gift from the gods. Who rules flying through the sky with golden wings. Submerged into the light, not everybody go to king with the scepter of justice. Melanin cultivating she until we are ethereans. Finally becoming one with the righteous sun. So raw, souls are raw. Magnificent glow with unconditional love. Scattered rays for days from the heavens above. Soul below, the souls just trapped in the lowest depths of hell. Incarnated into 
76 trillion cells to break free. We must be refined, masculine and feminine properties combined. The devil is the author of confusion. 183,000 divisions and religions. Denominations have post kids of the ism. Though isn't it written in the Bible that Jesus spoke in parables? The scriptures and gospels aren't just historical. Many passages weren't meant to be taken literal. Most of it is allegorical based on esoteric principles. Baptist versus Methodist. Pentecostal holiness versus Jehovah Witness. Mormons versus Seven Day Advances. Skeptics, atheists, and agnostics. Divine and constant tactics of the reptilians. Lower fourth dimensional aliens. So beware of the draconian Satanists. Yo, they aim to imprison all true beings through ignorance. So we crush the head of Leviathan. Battle mind control, superlimited suggestion. Brainwashing, indoctrination. Using religious politics, education. Economics, health and labor. Entertainment and war. Yo, sex and law. In this chessboard game called Life, we've all been pawns. Puppets on strings controlled by demonic spawns. You can't run with the devil and walk with God. You can't run with the devil. 